Hashtag Ask Goji Man, are plant-based saturated fats any better for vegans than animal-based saturated fats? Great question, let's get to it, roll the titles. Welcome back, it's good to see you all again. If you haven't met before then, hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a Masters in Nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And next year I'll be studying for a PhD in Nutritional Science. I do plant-based nutrition videos every other day in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below, and I'll choose one of these questions to answer in my next video. So without further ado, to the question. So fats are made up of chains of fatty acids. All foods contain fats, and these can either be classed as saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated fats. Many foods contain all three different types of fats, but it is the fat that is present in the most significant quantity that will determine its overall classification. For example, flaxseed contains saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, and polyunsaturated fats. But it's the polyunsaturated fats that make up the majority of the fat, which is why flax seeds are classified as polyunsaturated rich food. So fats have many important roles in the body. They make up the cell wall membranes, they help you absorb the fat-soluble vitamins, so A, D, E, and K, and they give you energy when your glucose reserves have depleted. And they also keep your skin and hair healthy. Basically, they are involved in most processes in the body. Now, I don't want to get all sciencey and geeky here, but you just need to know that saturated fats have no double bonds in their chemical structure and are therefore saturated with hydrogen atoms. And this is why saturated fats are solid at room temperature. Saturated rich foods include beef, poultry, pork, plant oils such as coconut oil, dairy products, processed meats, and junk foods such as crisps, biscuits, and cakes. The World Health Organization recommends that saturated fatty acids should be replaced with polyunsaturated fatty acids in the diet, and the total intake of saturated fatty acids should not exceed 10%, and that's 10% of your total calories for the day. This recommendation is because of the known risks of saturated fats and their link to heart disease, cancer, and other chronic diseases. All you need to remember is that saturated fats, depending on how much you eat, can be inflammatory in the body. And it is this inflammation that is often the driving force behind many of our chronic leading diseases. And contrary to what some people tell you, mainly from the paleo and carnivore camps, saturated fats are not essential in the body. Only omega-3 and omega-6 fats are essential. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on mono and polyunsaturated fats. You just need to remember that the chemical structure is different from saturated fats, and as you move away from saturation, then the fats become liquid at room temperature. And this is one of the main reasons why these types of fats are health-promoting and anti-inflammatory in the body. So the majority of vegans who reduce saturated fats in their diet and increase mono and polyunsaturated fats, well, they do very well from a health perspective. These people can normally take the short-chain omega-3s from plant-based sources, so ALA, and convert them into the long-chain omega-3s, so EPA and DHA. So if you are not overly familiar with omega-3s, then you will have probably have heard people talking about EPA and DHA when talking about fish and fish oil. Preformed EPA and DHA aren't available from plant-based foods, with a couple of exceptions, so the body has to convert plant-based ALA sources into EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are essential for optimal health, and I have done a video on marine phytoplankton which is a great vegan source of EPA and DHA, so be sure to check out the video here. So we are all good, right? Well, not quite. So you've probably seen in the media over the last few years, studies which show that vegans and plant-based dieters who are apparently deficient in long-chain omega-3s. The media then sensationalise these stories, and once again, vegan diets are deficient. What these people fail to tell you is that there are large groups of people who have genetic mutations in their FANS1 gene. This gene is responsible for converting short-chain polyunsaturated fats to the longer-chain forms of EPA and DHA. When you have this mutation, you need to give your body the preformed versions of EPA and DHA, otherwise you could run into deficiency and develop health conditions because your body won't produce enough of these essential fats. So it's worth testing your EPA and DHA if you are vegan or plant-based, particularly if you are Chinese, Japanese, Hispanic, or Native American, as these populations have a 40 to 90% chance of having a single nucleotide polymorphism. 
And remember that it's very easy to supplement with plant-based active forms of EPA and DHA. So I went off on a bit of a tangent there, so back to the question of whether plant-based saturated fats are bad for us. And the answer very much depends on how much saturated fat you are consuming in your diet. Another factor that needs to be taken into account is there are different types of saturated fats such as lauric and stearic acid and some of these saturated fats have more saturation than others. So from a general perspective, saturated fats are fine when eaten in small amounts. So for example, in dairy products they only have small amounts of the healthy omega-3s, a little more in terms of monounsaturated fats, but lots of saturated fats. And the same can be seen in many meats and also junk foods. In contrast, in nuts and seeds, you typically see high levels of omega-3s and high levels of monounsaturated fats. Saturated fats only account for 5-10% to of the total fat contained, and they fall in line with the World Health Organization's 10% guidelines. I'm not overly concerned with saturated fats when eaten as part of plant-based whole foods. They are packaged how nature intended. They become a problem when isolated, such as olive oil, coconut oil, etc, etc. Many macro and micronutrients are the same. Isolate sugar, you have a problem. Isolate protein, you have a problem. Olive oil and similar fats and oils are often lauded in the media as health foods. They might be less dangerous than saturated fats found in animal products because of the saturation levels, but don't for one minute think they are healthy. I've done a video on oils, so be sure to check it out here. Now these comments might infuriate some of you who eat these products and you will probably say these are healthy. So I have a challenge for you. The gold standard of nutritional science and research are randomized controlled clinical trials. If one of you can find a large study that shows olive oil and coconut oil are healthy, then I will do a video naked. And you don't want to see that. I will let you into a little secret. These studies don't exist. The only studies that show health benefits are small observational or meta-analysis studies where cause and effect isn't shown. So essentially they are industry funded to sell products. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, if you have a question for me, then hashtag AskGojiMan in the comments below and I'll choose one of these questions to answer in my next video for you. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.